on, Uncle Jesse here. Inside this box is the newest resin 3D printer from Anycubic, the Mono 6K, and I'm crazy excited to get this thing unboxed but I wanted to give myself a little bit of a challenge for this video. This machine from Anycubic is supposed to print stupidly fast, and I really wanna put that to the test based on a recent video that I saw from Unnecessary Inventions, which is the t-shirt that I'm wearing here. He just recently did a video where he was showing a full concept from the idea to development to production within a 24 hour time frame. So I wanna get this thing unboxed, get a bunch of prints going, and then get this out to you guys within a 24 hour time frame. And as of right now, it is 2.56 p.m. on Thursday, November 11th. So I'm getting everything unboxed and set up here, and I noticed the build plate for this is the surface. It's like a crazy pattern textured laser etched surface, but I'm assuming it's there to help with the build plate adhesion, and which means you more than likely don't need to sand this which is what I do on a lot of my resin 3D printers for the build plate is I sand it down just ever so slightly to give it a little bit better sticking surface. And it looks like this is, yeah, it might be laser etched to give it a bit of texture there and grip for your 3D prints. The other cool thing that they've included is a screen protector. So this is a protective film that's gonna go over the screen and instructions on how to install it. I've not, as far as I'm aware, I don't think I've had any other resin 3D printers come with a, with a screen protector that you can actively install after getting everything unboxed. Also comes with a lot of the other standard things that you see with most resin 3D printers. Heavy duty metal spatula, you've got a plastic spatula, you've got your USB stick, which has more detailed instructions, as well as a, I'm assuming there's gonna be a test file on there. Some protective gloves, a mask, and some filters, power supply, tools, and screws. It's gonna have the vat as well, and the vat does have these little feet on the end, which I love, thank you so much. That means that the FEP sheet doesn't sit flush against your tabletops when you sit down. All right, it's a little after four o'clock right now. I'm already behind schedule on this video because I ran into a bunch of issues getting the files sliced on this machine. The Mono X 6K uses a different file format than the standard Mono X. So I then went and used the slicer that's provided by Anycubic for the machine, which is I think Photon Workshop. I was then able to tweak the settings there and get this print going right now, which should be a quick 30 minute or so test print. It's moving crazy fast as well. But uh, just happy that I was able to actually get something printing here. That's wasted a lot of time just trying to figure this one out. And by the way, I'm fully anticipating that Chitu Box as well as Lychee will have dedicated profiles that work with that new file format here at some point here in the near future. And hopefully Chitu Box actually fixes that issue with being able to export Mono X files for your printer. Oh no! Some of the bases didn't make it here. The miniatures themselves look like they printed just fine. It's just a few of these bases for the miniatures did not print. But what I wanted to show you is on the back, you can actually see the pattern from the build plate on the back of this flat print. All right, so unfortunately I just had to stop this print because the bottom exposure, it was peeling away. It, look at that, it actually split from the base. I'm not quite sure how the heck that happens. So I'm gonna refine the settings just so slightly as I'm dripping stuff everywhere here and get this restarted. All right, and four hours later, we have our Joker bust. Man, this is looking good. We did have some print issues with it though, where it looks like it was just separating from the overall print. From my phone here at my computer, and I wanted to show why I'm seeing those print issues. And if we look at the file here, like this Batman bust from Eastman, there's no supports on the back there. And when we look into Photon Workshop, so this is the slicer provided by Photon. Currently the only thing that we'll be able to slice in that PWMB format for the printer, uh, I'm assuming Lychee and Cheetah Box will be following up with some updates here in the near future. But here you can see all around the edges, a whole bunch of weirdness that is coming from the print. And then when I run through this, you'll see lots of little weird artifacts throughout the print. And then here, like this section, it's just not even connecting, which is why the print completely broke in the back there, which is no surprise. And what's really odd is if I look into Cheetu Box, where I originally hollowed this out and added the supports, if I run through this on their end, which is really laggy, uh, there's none of that, which is great to see. 
But thanks to some help from the folks over on the Anycubic Mono X Facebook group, they basically all validated and mentioned that I'm basically running into this issue because I have created the the files here in Chitu Box, or even this will occur in Lychee, if I hollow out and support the files in another slicer, bring it into Photon Workshop and try to slice it, it's gonna end up with all this weirdness here. However, if I go ahead and actually do all of that work, which is insanely painful here directly in this app of hollowing and supporting, and it's so slow and laggy and it's just painful, absolutely painful, then it will actually slice correctly. Quick status update, it is 1.56 p.m. I'm done with all of my 3D printing. I've cleaned all of the 3D prints. I'm actually just curing everything right now, so I'm a little behind schedule. So now it's just to give my you know initial thoughts here on the Mono X 6K. All right, it is now 2.09 p.m. on Friday, November 12th. I gave myself a 24 hour deadline to see if I could get this unboxed and get a bunch of things 3D printed so that I could give you guys my initial thoughts on this machine. Again, it's not necessarily a review uh, and I definitely wouldn't call it a review just yet of the Mono X 6K, but uh, I did run into a number of print failure issues, which is probably why I wasn't able to print as much as I was hoping I was going to because of just some, I think it really comes down to the Anycubic <laughs> Uh, the, the, the slicer that they're providing with the machine because of that new proprietary file format that this machine uses that's not available yet within Cheetu Box or Lychee Slicer. So one of the big ones that I think a lot of folks are interested in on this machine are miniatures. So I loaded up a bunch of those Loot Studio miniatures that are pre-supported. These actually printed beautifully and zero issues with those printing. Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say zero issues. Some of the base files from those prints broke away during the print process, so I would need to reprint those. But these might be some of the absolute best looking 32 millimeter miniatures that I've ever printed. And again, these were printed at the 1.5 exposure time and all the lift speeds were set to 240 millimeters per second. So it was printing really fast. Next, we ran into a good number of print failures trying to get this to work and it was, this is where I was starting to troubleshoot where it was coming into some of the slicer issues with this and trying to figure out why exactly these files from Dosis 3D would not work. These are from his Patreon, such an amazing Patreon. I'm gonna really, really recommend you all check that out if you're looking for some amazing pre-supported files that you can run off and 3D print. So this is a Joker bus that he created. I ended up, was able to get the base and the hat to print, but again, lots of weird printing artifacts from that Anycubic Workshop slicer. And you can't print a Joker without printing Batman, so I printed Eastman's Batman bust. I was really looking forward to seeing how this would print. And again, the print details where it didn't screw up look amazing. But again, it comes down to that slicer issue <laughs> for this printer. I really do not understand. I'm sure there's a technical reason why they went with that new file format. It's just, it's painful to see because no one wants to work with that workshop slicer, any cubic. Love you guys. You make some amazing machines. Stick to making the machines, not the slicers. The That workshop slicer is just a miserable experience to work with, especially on the Mac side. I have a crazy powerful Mac now, and it just it takes forever to slice anything, to hollow out anything, add holes, add supports. It's just a really painful application. <laughs> I wasn't entirely sure if this was going to work, so I've printed in the past some of those articulating flexible slugs in resin and I wanted to try out this file that I've seen over on Colts 3D. This is an articulated dragon by McGuy Beer, I think is what his name was. It's a $4 file over on Colts 3D and it printed so well. I placed it, sliced it, did all that stuff directly in Anycubic software and it printed phenomenally. I can't believe how well this printed and it only took I think an hour and like 15 minutes or an hour and 20 minutes to 3D print and it's so 
so clean. I can't just with my naked eye, I can't see any layer lines on this thing. Again, I'm not gonna call this a review video because I do want to basically reprint everything that I'm showing here. Once all of the slicers have been updated with Cheetah Box and Lychee to support this new file format for the Mono X6K. Fingers crossed that happens soon. Because again, the print quality on this is outstanding. Again, it's just some of the weird funkiness that we're seeing with the, the I don't even know how to explain it. It's a whole bunch of just scattered pixels that appeared in the prints. Now the machine isn't available just yet for purchase. I believe that's coming here in the next week or two. I'll have links down below to any cubic site where you can find this once it's available. I'll have links to it. Just keep that in mind when it comes to actually pre-ordering or buying this machine that you're gonna wanna make sure that you can actually slice your files and print things directly from another slicer not use the one that any cubic sends you. I did also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. If you're interested in finding out more information about my Patreon and my resin support settings, or just in general, my resin settings, you can find links to that over in my Patreon down below. But let me know in the comments what you thought and if I should try and do this again. I've got so many resin 3D printers and I feel like if I don't start doing something like this, I'll never be able to get to all of them. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.